Welcome to Rap School, or whatever I'm calling this. I, I imagine Rap School might have been taken, but if it's not, then great. But if it is, then okay. Um, so this is going to be a channel devoted to the actual niche that I think I think I would do well with. Um, and it is a niche because I am talking about rap here. I love other genres of music. Recently, I love metal. Um, you can see in some of my writings online or in some of uh, my other channels on YouTube and Rumble, uh, one on YouTube, others on Rumble, you could see that I like metal quite a lot. Um, I also like other things like uh, folk music, particularly for the lyrics. I think folk music is probably the most similar. Interestingly enough, you might not think so, even if you've heard the Uncluded by, or the Uncluded album um, by Kimmy Dawson and Aesop Rock. You still might not think that rap is so analogous to folk music, but it really is. Uh, folk music is all about long verses. And uh, it's all about having sort of different cadences in the long verses, and it's really lyrics focused. It's not focused on the background music. Uh, you know, you can listen to multiple Joni Mitchell albums many times and then think back to a song and really like remember her lyrics and her vocal melodies. But other than maybe a song like Coyote or something where the melody is or the, the guitars are so iconic, you might not remember uh, the instrumentals and in rap songs you indeed might remember the instrumentals but in any case it all takes a back seat to the lyrics um, in both genres and whereas like a genre like metal it's so not about the lyrics that for probably more than half of the metal albums I've ever listened to like most of the metal albums I've ever listened to a lot of which would be in the last few years I I might not be able to tell you lyrics from like any of the songs or even any of the songs' names pointing back to them. Um, because with metal, with uh, the way I've done it anyway, it's been more about listening to each album and just listening to each album in its entirety when you do, like putting it on and then maybe pausing it at points, but like going back to it and listening it to it to the end before you start another album, uh, rather than going and listening to particular songs. And really, like I don't want to listen to particular songs because then... I will play a particular song more times than I've uh, listened to the album that it's on, and therefore it might feel like a part of the album is sort of out of sync with the rest of it, um, which has been the case for an album like Rust in Peace by Megadeth. And I actually recently got the original version as opposed to the infamous remaster of the infamous Megadeth remasters. And... Um, it's nice to listen to the whole thing in the original version, but it's like, man, Holy Wars and to a little of a lesser extent, Hangar 18, they're, they're some of the greatest songs of all time, but I've listened to them so many more times than I've listened to the rest of the album that it sort of feels like I'm kind of uh, contributing to overplaying them when I listen to the album. Um, or like with a song like by Iron Maiden, like Run to the Hills or something. It's like if I listen, I think that's on the number of the beast. And if I listen to the number of the beast, it's like when that song comes up, it, it feels like, you know, sort of out of sync. It feels a little more worn out. Like if you were to think of the music as an actual record, like the album as like a physical entity, then it'd be like that part of the album would seem a little more fragile than the rest of it. And same with Hallowed Be Thy Name, but to a lesser extent there. Um, but to a greater extent more recently, actually. But in any case, metal is not about the lyrics. Like, it, usually not. Like, it may have really good lyrics. Like Iron Maiden, they tend to have pretty pretty decent lyrics to even interesting ones. Uh, Metallica recently has had actually very, like, spiritually substantial lyrics. Uh, even on such hated albums as Saint Anger... That, that album has a bunch of like really psychologically deep lyrics, and I actually like that album a lot anyway. But, um, but anyway, yeah, I mean, it's like there are albums in metal where the lyrics are important, but then there are albums where they're singing in a different language, like a lot of black metal and stuff. It's like, well, a lot of it's still in English, but some of the song titles or even maybe the lyrics will be in Norwegian or Swedish or something or whatever other language it might be. And 
in many cases, actually, like for the Dark Throne albums, for example, that I have, I have like the uh, Unholy Trinity. Um, they have many albums, but they have three albums in particular towards the beginning of their career where it's like three of the most celebrated black metal albums of all time. I'm not sure if those songs are in English or a different language. Like, partly due to the singing and how, like, it, it, some, if you're not really listening, you might not even know what they're saying. Like, partly due to the singing, but then, then also partly just because, like, I sort of listen to the singing as another auditory component often enough, and I'm not really listening to the words. And that might even happen with some rap, like with some uh, recent-day Eminem stuff, where it's so much about the flow and it's so much about the sound of his lyrics that many of the lyrics might go by and it's like they're guitar sound effects. Like, you don't really listen to them. But this channel, and I'm going to put some other stuff from that I've done before on this channel to begin with, because I have done lyrics analy analyses, and I find that I think that stuff comes out pretty well. This channel is going to be about the lyrics. This, like, I love written poetry. I love literature. Um, I haven't read nearly as much recently as I read, uh, you know, in college. And even then, I didn't read, like, a lot, a lot. But I definitely uh, read things, like, just faster and easier and more numerously than I have more recently. Like, I just, oh, I saw Up in the Air. I like the movie. Oh, they're selling the book. Um, and it's... the. The movie was based on the book. Oh, I'll read the book. Knocked out the book. Oh, it was pretty good. You know, it's like, uh, it, uh, maybe it wasn't quite as polished as the movie was ultimately. Or like, oh, The American, I like that. I did this with fucking just George Clooney movies specifically, you know, at least in the case of these two. Oh, The American, I, I want to see that movie. It's based on a book. The book has a cool, like, cover that's the um, sort of, like, old-fashioned kind of adventure novel type of... Uh, version of George Clooney's likeness, like, running away from, like, an orange background behind him. Like, that's pretty cool. That cover looks cool. I'll buy the book. And then I read the book, and it was like, oh, this book is so good. And then I watched the movie, I think, after I finished the book, and it was like, this movie is completely different from the book. I love the movie. I love the book. I think the movie might be a little better, but there's a certain richness in the book. It's like a whole cornucopia laid out in front of you in terms of the prose and the richness of all of it. So it's it's really good. And it's like these days, it's like, man, <laughs> you know, I'm reading White Noise right now and I'm on page like 40 and, or something like that. And even that feels like kind of an accomplishment. I did read uh, at least 10 books over my probation. And depending on what you consider a book, if you don't consider um, Elevation by Stephen King a novel as much as a novella, then maybe it's more like nine. But, you know, I read, I read 10 books, if you count that, um, over the course of my probation. So over three years. And it's like... Even that feels like, hey, I got through ten books. You know, it's that it was it wasn't nothing. It wasn't just starting some and then not finishing them. Oh, great! But you know, I am trying a little more these days. I think I I may have come up with a good system that will actually work, where I pick three books uh, out at once and then I have to finish one to add in a new book to the list. And if I if I want to change one of the other books. I still have to finish one of the other two out of the three to then add the new one to take the place of the one I finished, but then also change another book to be another one. So when I finish one, I can have the list be two new books and one book that was already there, or I can have the other two books stay the same and just add a new book to take the place of the one I just finished. And I think that will work out pretty well. And I'm not sure if I'm... Currently, all three are fiction books. Uh, it's White Noise by Don DeLillo. And then two very dark books. It's interesting. Like, even the covers, like, look similar. It's like this Red Dragon character uh, on the Thomas Harris book of Red Dragon. And then this, like, sort of playing card, but with, like, a skull instead of, like, a king's face. Um on the cover of the Damnation game, all in red with, like, the diamond next to him kind of bleeding, and it's like, so that's the Damnation game by Clive Barker, and it's like, shit, those are a couple uh, serious books, uh, seriously dark books, but also very well written for being uh, books that you could at one time or another get at a supermarket, and I did get the Damnation game at a supermarket uh, pretty recently, actually. I saw it at the supermarket. I often like to go and 
see like, hey, what books do they have? Usually they'll have like one given book as Steve with Stephen King as either the author or in the case of The Talisman, which they've had most recently, I think at the supermarket when I went there, as one of the two authors for a given book. And it's like, well, what Stephen King book are they probably going to have, you know? And or like, and sometimes they'll have an interesting one. This year he's releasing a new short story collection. Yes. And, um, and so they've had two short story collections in the books they've had for him at the supermarket uh, this calendar year so far, I think. They had Night Shift. That might have been the end of last year into the beginning of this year. And then they also had Just After Sunset, both of which I had already had in the past, but both of which I had ended up losing or throwing out at some point or something. So both of which I bought from that supermarket. And anyway, I bought the Damnation game. But, um, so, in any case, though, I think that's going to work. And I have gotten, I think I've gotten like 30 or 40 pages into the Damnation game and White Noise. And I've gotten, at least, I've gotten uh, through the first chapter of, uh, which I've read before, but I haven't read the whole book before, of Red Dragon. Um, so, you know, I, I think it's going to work well. This will help keep me from veering off and not finishing books because I keep these three, this trinity, well, there you go, Illuminati, right? But I keep this trinity of books and I have to finish one to load in a different one in place of either one of the one of the books that's already there or just in place of the one that I finish. So it's like either way to add a book that's not in those three, you're going to have to finish one of them. But you can pick the shortest one to finish. Um, it may not be to your benefit to have three really long books going at once because then it may feel like a big imposition to um, start reading a different one that you'd like to read. Now I am wondering, am I going to keep that as fiction and then have another slot for nonfiction and another slot for comic books and perhaps I'll have, is this Illuminati enough yet? Uh, I'll Perhaps I'll have five books going at once and then it'll be the same deal, but if I really want to then I can just read through the, the graphic novel as fat like that'd probably be the fastest thing to do unless it's like a really long one maybe i can just read through the graphic novel and then um add in a new one for that category plus change either what the non-fiction book or one of the fiction books maybe i'll do it that way that adds a little latitude but i think the original spirit of it was a book like not a poetry collection necessarily because I'm not sure I want to introduce this into the paradigm and I'm not sure if in the paradigm it original it already was introduced there like in spirit but I think in spirit it might have generally been like a book like not an essay in a book you can read an essay that's you can read an essay or a short story from another book or a poem or maybe even a whole poetry collection or maybe even a graphic novel or uh, script or something which don't feel like works in the same sense of uh, the amount of work that's there as uh, in terms of the page count anyway the amount of words that are there you could say poetry has more power to each of its poems in some way so poetry collections are often shorter but they're still as big by what they're presenting to you or even bigger than as a novel or something but in any case I think the spirit was like a novel, a nonfiction book, a philosophy book, like any, like a book length book, not something shorter than that, or like a poetry collection or something, or not like a poem, or not like a short story or an essay or whatever that you can, which you can also read, but like a full length work or something, like that length of work. 